Hey y'all, I think something that people that are outside of agriculture don't really realize is the amount of hours that go into farming. Right now it seems like everybody is understaffed. Well, other than some really big operations, which are few and far between, Pretty much everybody in ag has always been understaffed <laughs> as far as I know. Um, as much dealings as I've had with it, we've always been understaffed. And I'm not, not saying all this to complain, just to uh, enlighten. Um, it's seven o'clock at night, and believe it or not, I've got a family that likes to see me too. But they're calling for rain later this week so it's gonna rain for like three or four days straight and that is the absolute worst thing that can happen to a crop of pumpkins especially but pretty much any kind of anything related to produce it don't want that much water uh, once the crop is made, it's uh, it's had all the water it wants, and after that point comes, water just makes stuff rot. So that's why I'm on my second load of pumpkins this evening. Still work a day job at the moment. Um, that's why we are in a mad dash trying to get as many pumpkins picked as we can in the next three days before the rain sets in. So. part about this whole pumpkin picking process is it's the field that we've got our pumpkins in this year is 15 miles away from the farm roughly give or take um, so the only way that I've got to do it at the moment is I've got a 16 foot low boy trailer, which is what we do most of our harvesting and farm work with. We normally pull it with a tractor. And if we're harvesting around the farm, we will load our bins on there and pick with the tractor, go back and load with the forklift. It works out really good. But for picking 15 miles away, a tractor is not such a good option. So I'm pretty much having to use my truck, pull this thing back and forth. We can only put about six bins on there, so um, it only takes us 25, 30 minutes to load six bins of jack-o'-lanterns out of the field. And it takes me an hour round trip to bring them back to the farm, load up, and go back to the field. So that's where a lot of my time is getting spent, unfortunately. But we're getting through it. We've got one block of jack-o'-lanterns harvested so far. It's either two or three more blocks. Hopefully there's only two <laughs> more blocks of jack-o'-lanterns. We've picked so far, I think we've picked nine jack-o'-lanterns before today. And we have picked seven pie pumpkin bins before today. Today, since four o'clock, we have picked 12 jack-o'-lantern and I'm going back to pick up uh, six pie pumpkins and it's unfortunate that the pie pumpkins had to wait till the last because the sun's going to be setting here in about 15 minutes 
about when I get there, pie pumpkins take longer to load than jack-o'-lanterns because instead of there being like our jack-o'-lanterns have been running about a 45 count bin and we, we grade in the field, we separate out the large carbon pumpkins from the small carbon pumpkins and the large are like a 15 to 20 pound pumpkin and there's about 45 of them in a bin and the small ones are about 75 in a bin these pie pumpkins there will be over a hundred in a bin I don't have an exact count on the pie pumpkins yet but uh, there's been a little bit of confusion with uh, a customer or two we've had some customers that have come to buy pie pumpkins and what they were actually wanting was a small carving pumpkin um, we typically grow a, a variety called cinnamon girl it looks like a small carving pumpkin but it's actually a pie pumpkin and that's what they're wanting well that seems really strange to me because around here typically a pie pumpkin is a buckskin um, flat my guys call them uh, flying saucers but they're uh, a small flat the variety is actually called Long Island cheese because it looks like a kind of like a white cheese wheel but six bins of those we've got probably 700 pumpkins to pick up to finish this load so uh, I don't know how much filming I'm gonna get to do it's gonna be dark dark by the time um, we get done loading this load because there is the sun like I say the sun's fixing to set and right now we have no moon whatsoever done by nine o'clock we've got we actually did not get six bands of pie pumpkins unfortunately they uh, they only had about three and a half cut we're losing a whole lot of our pie pumpkins unfortunately not I shouldn't say a whole lot we're losing some of our pie pumpkins to um, part of it is black rot which is caused by gummy stem blight the same uh, pathogen, pathogen or uh, fungi that causes gummy stem blight on cucurbits also causes the fruit to get black rot that's what they call it uh, let's see if I can find one and I'll show you what that looks like but I've also got some belly rot on the, the old timey pie pumpkins alright here is uh Here's some black rot. This is what black rot looks like on an old timey pie pumpkin. Um, see, it's not really getting soft yet. Uh, this is <clears throat> this is early stage black rot on a spaghetti squash. It'll start around the stem too. This is late stage black rot, and you see why they call it black rot. Um, but this is this is black rot. It uh, well, I think this is black rot. I know this is. I think this is too. It can look a little bit different on all types depending on what it's on. I think this is black rot too. And you see, it kind of makes sense when you see it in late stage like this because gummy stem blight makes the uh, stem kind of ooze, and you see this ooze coming out of that spot of black rot on this red curry squash it's something we really have to keep an eye on so we're losing a little bit to the black rot um, I don't know we were throwing out three or four to every pile they had cut there um, some of them five or six 
part of it is the pie pumpkins are on kind of the creek side of that field over there kind of the creek bottom if you will there's not really a creek bottom there but um, they're in the lower lower line area where it's damper uh, but the jack-o-lanterns don't really seem to be affected by it they are looking really really good so far we hadn't uh, as far as I know, we ain't really lost any jack-o'-lanterns to rot. Um, I did go over them and spray them with a Provia top the other day, uh, right after a rainstorm, to try to kind of nip it in the bud. Uh, a Provia top is a Syngenta chemical. It's good for a whole plethora of things, but it's good for anthracnose, gummy stem blight, belly rot. So. Um, it takes care of a lot of those problems and it help keep the fruit. At this point, we ain't concerned about keeping the vines healthy. We're just trying to keep the fruit in good shape. But um, today, uh, I mentioned in a recent video about some stuff I had ordered from Rainflow. And today, I got it in. This is what we're going to use for frost protection for our strawberries. It's called an XL Wobbler. This is a full size uh, XL. They make a mini wobbler, but they won't throw. They won't throw water as far. This has got a uh, like a 48 foot radius right here. Um, and the cool thing is they're really inexpensive. The way it works is it just sprays water in the middle, and that spins and makes the water go in all directions. It's really neat. I'll show you. You'll see when it, I get it up and operating. It's Kind of, it's not like what you're used to seeing a sprinkler. It's like psh, psh, psh. these like make it rain. Pretty cool. But I got everything on this pallet that I need to overhib water my strawberries. Got my three inch blue lay flat, inch and a half uh, oval hose here. Got uh, some other odds and ends. Got my risers. For my sprinklers um got my rods that the sprinklers set on and somewhere in here i hope i've got a uh yeah down there in the bottom i ain't gonna dig it out right now i've got a um murphy panel safety panel for my new pump so it'll uh shut it down if it runs low on pressure low on oil pressure motor gets hot um It'll cut the pump off but uh anyway i am going to call it a night and go find some supper i will see y'all in the next video thanks for watching and hit that subscribe button hit the bell so you know when i put out a new video we've got a whole lot of stuff going on that's fixing to be uh coming down the youtube pipe here in the very near future greenhouse building um I've got some farm equipment to build, um, a bale unroller. Well, I've got some lumber to saw. It won't be long, and we'll be cutting soybeans. Anyhow, I uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next time. All right. So one more thing: if you made it to this point in the video, y'all are the ones that watch all my content every week. So your opinion's the only one that matters. Um, on these videos where I'm gonna be doing like fabrication work or putting together the irrigation system or building the pump and filter set would you rather me just do kind of an overview and like here it is this is what I did or would you rather have a build series like I did with my sawmill when I repowered it um, just drop a comment let me know what you think if you enjoy the in-depth details down in the briar patch and how everything went together or would you rather just see like yep this is my new pump and talk about it for 10 minutes and that'd be the end of it um, let me know drop a comment i appreciate it thank you guys for watching see you